Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the ice on Amateur Sports TV, Tuesdays and Thursday nights here at 7 o'clock. Joining us tonight, a special goaltender who was at once at Lakehead University last year. We'll get to the stats line during the interview, but Jesse Pettinger did a phenomenal job last year, and she's moved on her way to Nipissing uh, to further her career, not only as a student athlete, but perhaps become a physiotherapist once her playing days might be over. Well, how, when that is going to be, we're not going to say we want her to play as many years as possible. She's a goaltender and a very good one at that. I'd like to uh, try my best to put a couple of pucks by her when I visit Nipissing once, but we'll see when that happens. But right now on the ice, uh, goaltender Jesse Pettiger. As promised, Jesse, thanks for joining us today on the ice. How was the two a day? Oh, it was it was good. It feels like hell when you're in it, but once it's done, it makes you feel the best as possible for the rest of the day. So is it skate first train or is it go back and forth? It's uh, today was iced at 830 and then you get a little bit of break to go back, eat food and then back to training. So not too bad. A little bit of extra work on those days. How many days a week do you do that schedule? Uh, we do that about three times a week. Two of those will be strength and conditioning training, and one a week is just conditioning. Okay, Jesse, I have to ask you, do you like being on the ice, or do I perform and train and strength condition off the ice? Uh, it's probably about 50-50. Depends what kind of uh, drills we're doing in practice and how involved I'm in, but I will always enjoy being in the gym lifting. Okay. That's interesting because a lot of players will prefer to be on the ice. But nonetheless, we understand now more than ever the importance of the balance of being on and off the ice. That strength conditioning when I was your age didn't happen very much. It was very much built on talent and skill, very much not on conditioning, let's call it that. It was, yeah. uh, now it's all changed, but probably for the good. Because you are a student athlete. You are, you, this is now your second year in university? Yeah, this will be my second year. Well, let's quick before we go. Let's go a little further back. Let's let's get in the way back machine here because I got to ask you. You know, how did you get involved in goaltending? At and at what age did you start skating? Oh, I think I feel I think this is my I want to say seventh season being a goalie, and I think I started skating in grade six. Wow! So a little bit late. Yeah, because when I was growing up, I'd play soccer and I'd play, like, volleyball and basketball. But when I moved to Dryden, that's when, like, everyone there played hockey. So that's my mom's like, okay, well, you're going to play hockey now. I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. Have fun with you. Just go. Here's some skates. Then you decided mom and dad got to buy you pads, a blocker, and a glove at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I'm like, if you're going to make me play, I might as well make you pay. There you go. you got to pay to play the game. What is, where were you before Dryden then? I lived in Winnipeg for eight years. Okay, so then, but Winnipeg has a pretty good hotbed of female hockey as well. I mean, what was I the... Know, I, just, I, I didn't get tapped into until I was in grade, yeah, six in Dryden, and then that's when we're like, okay, let's try this out. Okay, very cool. Did you ever play, like, I guess volleyball and basketball would be considered winter sports because of the courts, but what did you, how did you feel those sports kind of helped you out? Obviously, hand-eye coordination, but... In terms of work ethic, in terms of you know comp competitive level, what did those sports provide to you once you started playing hockey that you're like, okay, this seems like a natural progression? Um, I think it was really just like the different aspects that you got from the sport. Like you said, like it's just like it's something different that you can also apply to hockey with having to work with people in a different way. And then I know for hockey being a goalie, I can see the whole ice. And then the other sports, you kind of have to be able to open yourself up, be able to see the court or the field or, like, the next play that's going to be coming. So I know that really helped me in that aspect. And then, like, eye-hand eye coordination is, like, 100% involved in all those sports. No doubt. I mean, you got to have quick hands. You have to be able to respond quickly to a lot of different shots, a lot of different angles. What was the hardest thing to get used to 
in your first couple years playing in, in between the pipes or in the blue paint? Um, I think it was just like how to move more technique wise. I could kind of pick up like, okay, like they're shooting this is how fast the puck's going, but like, how do I get there and stop the puck? was really the first couple of years of doing that. Okay. Were you one of those goalies that would have felt like you had to jump up in the air and pounce on the puck, or did you let more of your stick stop it? Or? Uh, it was more of like, I remember my mom said, like the first couple of games I played, she said, you look like a dead fish out of water. <laughs> and I was like, I can work with that. They, I can stop the puck like that. It's fine with me. Dominic Kasich was a good fish out of water. He seemed to be an okay goaltender. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So playing in Dryden, uh, was it a female team you played for? Was it the boys you were playing with? Um, so, like, the first couple of years, it was just, like, house league stuff. Um, I played girls hockey my first year, and then I kind of, like, merged into boys hockey. And I played that up until grade 9 because I didn't make the varsity girls team in grade 9. Um, and then in grade 10, I played for the varsity girls team. And then I also played midget boys because I won more ice time. And then grade 11, 12, I actually tried out for the varsity boys team and made it. I was the starter on that team for two years. Um, and then, yeah, and then I went to Lakehead last year. Wow. So you had, you had a selection of male shooters, female shooters each year. You made the boys squad, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that was the first girl to even try out for the boys team, let alone make it in Dryden, because that, was, that wasn't a thing then. That was the midget AAA team, correct? No, that was the varsity boys high school team. Oh, the high school program. Okay, yeah. right on. Now that's, and you're the only, so you hold the accolade of being the first female to try out and place on the men, on the male varsity team. Yep. Was that when you knew you were kind of good at being a goaltender? I kind of, like, knew I could hang with the guys. I'm like, okay, the girls can't, like, I'm kind of bored. Like, you know, I kind of just stand here in the games. I'm like, okay, I need, I need the next level. I need to get that next notch in my belt. And that's where it led to. And I don't regret anything with that. Absolutely not. I mean, the next notch in that belt comes with, you know, more shots faster shots, a better awareness on the ice, do you think, from the men yeah. compared to the women? I mean, not taking any away from the female game, but, you know, guys know how to shoot the puck a lot better from different angles and from a lot harder. Not, angles. I found that they're not scared to try different things. Okay. That's what I really found. Like, you actually had to be on your toes whenever they're in the zone 24-7. Yeah. They could be behind the goal and they're like, oh, ha, ha, I'll bank it off the back of her leg and put it in. When girls, it's like, oh, like I have to make that pass up to the blue line. Okay, something. so it's more structured in the female game compared to the men's, where it's a little more yeah. liberal, more independent. Your teammates uh, in a high school setting, having a female on the team, was it a little different for you, or did you get rid of that taboo subject by saying, just treat me like one of the guys, I just I want to play I hockey? That's what you happened right off the bat. They're like, they came up to me like, you're one of the boys now. I'm like, cool. I'm okay with that. That's what I signed up for. Awesome. And they took you with open arms and you oh guys. Gosh, they were great. Two years of like some of the best hockey and best group of guys I could ask for. Any good stories you could tell from those two years that you remember? Um, I think our best story would be we were up against the Fort Francis Muskies who were on a streak of winning the whole year. We haven't beaten them. We go and play, not even in our home rink. We had to go out onto the reservation because there was something going on at the rink construction. We go out there, we like uh, annihilate them. And like first team to beat them all season, like everyone was just ecstatic. And it was just like, that was like one of the best feelings of that year to go out on. You speak like one of the boys. You have this, uh, you have this, uh, this raw rawness and this, you know, mentality that you just, you just love the game of hockey. Like you're just ready to rock. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how I approach it most times. Do you still play other sports during high school as well? Uh, I played basketball for four years. So like all throughout high school, I played basketball. In grade nine and ten, in grade nine, I played on our high school volleyball team. 
grade 10, I played AAA volleyball, and we traveled to Waterloo. I played AAA soccer out of Kenora for two years of high school. I played one year of Eagles soccer, and then I did one year of track and field. So what was the gas bill for your parents back then? I don't even want to ask. <laughs> like, not, that's, um, I, your parents must have been, like, your number one supporters for every sport oh, you played. Oh, my mom, like she said now, she, I'm like, oh, like, what do you do now that I'm gone? She's like, I do nothing. I'm like, so I was your life. She's like, pretty much. I was like, right. no. You say that with a smile on your face, but a lot of parents look at that as, you know, a bit of a pride thing, but also a way that they've kind of, as a way of acceptance, knowing that you're ready to move on now. Like yeah. you've, you've been given this opportunity to try such a wonderful array of activities, mostly sports, but then you take full advantage of them and you look back and say, you're probably saying thank you, mom, for everything that you've given me and the opportunities you've oh, given me right today. I would not be like anywhere near where I am now without her. Yeah, she's got to be your number one supporter, and oh, she's probably going to watch the game. game. Yeah. Like, I remember really? one time she had to get a surgery done at the hospital, and we had a basketball game the next day. She rolls in with the IV and everything, and I'm like, you didn't have to come to this. She's like, well, I'm not missing the game. She rolled in with an IV. Yeah. I was, like, I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to win this game now. And you did, I hope? Yeah, I think we did. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a very that's story number two. That's really good. I have to ask you a question. Like another one, obviously, I'm going to ask you lots more questions. But why number 35? Is that the jersey you wear now? Uh, I wore 35 for my two years of boys hockey. Um, and I don't know. We were just picking numbers at, like, the team meeting at the beginning of the year. And one of the guys was like, you pick number 35. It's a sick number. I'm like, okay. I don't really care. Um. I was like, okay, that, that's my number now. But this year I am 31. 30 okay. is taken. Hopefully next year, 34. Okay. Now, is there a reason why you're hoping 34 and why 35 has no uh, basketball players' numbers? So, okay. I just, I, it's a, and it looks good on jersey. It has to look good. There are numbers that look good on jerseys. There are numbers that, you know, represent a certain type of player. I mean, mm -hmm. you're never going to see another 99 or 66 or 87. So those numbers are kind of taboo. You're never going to see a 33 again playing between the pipes. And no. 29, 30, 31 seem to be the choices. John Van Beensrick was 34. I had um, an option of uh, 60 this year. 60 for Jose Theodore, perhaps? Yeah. I don't know, but I was like, you know, that's, that's not my style. That's not your style? Okay. Was there ever a goaltender you watched growing up when you were playing? Um, when I was younger, I think it was um, – I really watched Jonathan Quick. And then I also watched Andre Fleury a lot. Those are probably the top two that I would go back and forth from, besides, like, whoever was in the net for the Winnipeg Jets. Okay. Pretty flexible goaltenders you pick in the first two. I mean, yeah. I see more of them firsthand. Those guys are uh, very flexible. Oh, yeah, like unbelievable. Yeah. I'm assuming you have a pretty good flexibility behind you. Uh, I definitely before. have to work on it again after being out for six months for COVID. But other than that, like usually I can do splits from post to post. That's once I'm warmed up and everything, of course. We're not going static in there. No. I, don't, no. I don't blame oh, you on that one. <laughs> That'd be pretty painful. Let's talk about your season real quick last year with Lakehead University. And I, I said to you off camera, I'd look, look at these numbers and then I had to look twice because it's a short season. It's only 13 or 14 games, correct? Yeah. But a 9.43 save percentage and a .86 goals against average in the ACHA. Yeah. How, I mean, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, what was your win-loss record? Oh, I would have to look that up again. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think, like, for the team in general or just for me? Just for you. That's not a lot of losses, I don't think. I think I lost two games. But, I mean. All the games I played. You must not have had a, have had a lot of offensive help in those two games because you don't let many pucks in. Yeah, I think they were, like, two to one, three to one empty net, 
like in the last minute trying to like make that last minute push, but they weren't big gap games. What was the big difference, Jesse, going from a high school setting to a university collegiate style? Let's talk about lifestyle first, and then we'll talk about the game. So your first day on campus compared to going from high school to university. You know no one. Usually high school, you get like the elementary friends that you have, and you got to like get to transfer it into the high school a little bit. University, I know there's a couple kids from Dryden that were in my program. If I didn't know them, I would have known no one. So, How like, Pardon? How quick were you able to make friends with your team? Obviously, that's got to be a huge bonding process. Yeah, that would, that happened pretty quick. I know this year it happened even quicker just because, like, we're the only ones that are really around. Um, but last year we had tryouts in early October, I think. Late September, early October. And by the, I want to say, end of October, we were already doing, like, team stuff. What kind of bonding, team bonding uh, activities do you remember doing last year with Lakehead that just emphasized the friendships off the ice, but also the fact that you're all together as one trying to uh, achieve a common goal by the end of the season? Um, I know we did um, making smile cookies for Tim Hortons. We did that as a big team bonding thing at the beginning of the year, so everyone kind of like got to know each other and like had to work together and like, a somewhat stressful environment. Um, and then I remember after we had one of our home tournaments, our coach took us out for like Boston pizza or something like that. And like we do stuff like that. Or like we did a lot of volunteering in the community. I know myself and one of my best friends that I made on the team helped um, kids with the George Jeffrey Learning Center, like how to skate. We taught them how to skate over six weeks, six weeks once a week. Okay. So that was – we did so many things in the community. I definitely think that helped, like, the overall team bonding and, like, getting us, like, out into the community. How great is it to see your efforts as, you know, a role model perhaps to younger skaters or younger athletes and seeing the smiles on their faces and uh, just the amount of – just a little bit of effort that you're making to make such a great deal in their lives. Oh, like it was amazing. Like when we taught the kids to skate, me and my friend were like, before they couldn't even like stand up without us like pretty much holding their whole body weight. And by the end they could like slowly skate from like one end to the other, but we didn't have to help them whatsoever. We're like, this is amazing. Like we just helped these kids, didn't know how to skate, never been on skates before, like figure out how to skate and hopefully wanting to like go farther with that yeah no it's it's a truly great feeling i love coaching younger kids and seeing this you know their smiles on the face when they get on the ice and the frowns when they have to leave the ice because they just don't want yeah. to stick with me jesse for a second we're going to take a quick break we're going to talk about this year at nipissing as well as a little more about your life off the ice here on the ice All right. Staying late after work yesterday and I missed the game, so I'm watching the replay now. Isn't that just a highlight, though? That's one of the best things about ASTV. They have full broadcasting coverage of all the pre-game and post-game shows, so I can watch wherever I want, whenever I want. That sounds lame. No, it doesn't. That sounds really cool. What else do they have? I'm glad you asked, because they have play-by-play, -play, color commentating, up to nine camera angles, interviews, online shows, and much more. Whatever. I have no idea what that means. Basically, if you're a sports fan, 
ASTV is the place to go. They have everything you want. Didn't Mom get mad at you for the last subscription you signed up for? Yeah, Mom's gonna kill you if she finds out you pay. Yeah, she probably would, except I haven't told you the best part yet. ASTV is completely free. Really? She's gonna be super happy to hear that. Exactly! Now I can cancel all my other subscriptions because ASTV covers it all. Let's watch the game. Back with Jesse Pettinger from the Nipissing Lakers. Now, you made the change this year. I got to ask you the tough question, Jesse. Why? Um, what happened that we had to make that change? I just really like Lakehead was a great program. The coaches are great and they did push me, but I just wanted that like next level. I'm like, I could do this level pretty, pretty easily. I was winning all those games. I'm like, I need another challenge. And this, this is it. This is the next jump I had to make. What is the difference caliber wise then between the two leagues that you're playing in? Um, nothing against Lakehead, but leaps and bounds. Okay. Explain. The girls are smarter. They have a better sense of the ice. They have a better skill level. The passes they make. Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, how? Um, the shots, like they come a lot faster. They'll way quicker release. Um, these girls can pick the net apart if they want to. Um, and it's just, it's just so much more. And the way that they hold themselves. It's not so much this is a club team. It's like this is a varsity athlete team. So the challenges are there on the ice. Yeah. The challenges are also there off the ice and in the classroom, I take it as well. Yes. You're still continuing with a phys ed, which is very similar to a kinesiology program yeah. that you want to take. Uh, your efforts of wanting to be a physiotherapist are not light. How are you going to or how do you continue to balance the student athlete experience by maintaining, you know, an efficient GPA to get you into the next level off the ice. Um, really, it's just being so busy with hockey and like workouts and do doing other team stuff. It's mainly when you get that little bit of time to do work, you have to do the work. Otherwise, you're gonna fall behind, you're gonna slip, and it's just gonna go downhill very quickly. So it really forces you to time manage, like to the extreme. You said time, time management are the two time and management are the two words I try to tell many high school kids that that need to start doing now before they get into university. Yeah, because without it, you will lose. Like you said, you will get a gap in between your athletics and your academics that you will not be able to repair. And yeah. I think learning that is vital and crucial to being a prolific student athlete. Uh, tell us a little bit, Jesse, about what your average day looks like at Nipissing for other student athletes that are thinking to go that route for their next level. Um, really, it's usually like I, I tend to, it depends when our practice falls, but like I'll just like talk about tomorrow because like I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Sure. Like tomorrow we have a 8.30 in the gym. So I'll be up around like probably like 7.30 so I can make breakfast and like kind of like get going with my day and do my uh, mental training in the morning that I work on with um, Robert Broughton every day, just doing that in the morning. Uh, go to the gym. It's usually I think we're doing full body tomorrow. So that will probably be like a 60 minute Maybe a little bit more workout um, After that I usually come back to res I will make a quick lunch or grab a protein bar or something uh, Then we head on to the ice for I think 12 to 1 30 and then after that it's usually just um, schoolwork <laughs> until I go to bed. Wow. So you've got a pretty solid, solid morning. Like you said, today you had your skate first, then your gym. Tomorrow you'll have your gym, then your skate. In there you mix the mental, you know, the mental conditioning as well, which I've talked with Robert many, many times. Front loading is vital. Oh, it's maintaining like a focus, right? Like looking at, cause I've only been working with Robert for probably almost a year come this January. 
and comparing how I approach the game at Lakehead in October, November, December versus how I approach the game now, I'm just like, I would not be here without him because it's just mind boggling how important it is. Mind boggling because of the number of distractions that you put in front of yourself or the fact that there are that many distractions to create this alternative uh, escape slash excuse for not performing well? Probably the probably both. Okay. Probably a little bit of both. More the second option than the first, but definitely like both have an impact on like the outcome of your performance and everything. Yeah, okay. We talked a lot of you talked a little bit about your you're a breakfast person in the morning and then a snack. Where do you where do you equate sleep into this equation? I know uh, how much sleep is do you get? How much do you feel sleep is important to repair and rejuvenate? For me, it's definitely a big part of like being able to get up in the morning and get going right away. I know if I don't get a good sleep, it's usually like kind of a little bit more like dragging my feet getting out of bed versus when I get the eight hours. So usually I'll put a timer on for around 9, 30, 10. And when that, like at night, and then when that goes off, I'm like, okay, you've been working all day, put the schoolwork away, go watch a TV show, go do everything you need to do to like, kind of like wind down for the day. And then usually by 1130, I'm out. Okay. So you have a bit of a routine as well in the evening to kind of zone yourself out and get you prepared, which is good. You're not just going straight from the books, straight to bed. Because that yeah. never happens. You'll always be thinking about everything in bed. Yeah, I've done that before, and it just then I'm up till two in the morning, and it just not a good time. Not a good time. That's right. You just toss and turn. Exactly. What's the biggest difference, uh, community-wise, you've noticed, or is there a big difference between where you grew up in Dryden, you went to school in Lakehead, and now you're at school in Nipissing? Is there a big difference community-wise, or is it fairly similar? Um, I definitely notice a difference between Dryden and Thunder Bay, mainly because like Dryden's a pretty small town and Thunder Bay is not huge, but like it's slightly bigger and you have more things you can go do. But definitely the people I found in Dryden were a little bit more um, lenient to new things happening. Because I know when I joined the boys team, a lot of people are like, why, why are you doing that? Like you have a girls team like kind of like stick with what you're supposed to. But in Thunder Bay, it's more like more open to other things because they have a lot more going on. Okay. And then North Bay is kind of probably a little bit different when there's no COVID going around, but it's really, it's like an old person, old folk community, like with a little bit of like university hockey, OHL team thrown in there. Sure. Okay. What's it been like up there since, you know, you've been there with, you know, the current situation we're in with, you know, the pandemic and are your classes online? Are you in class? You aren't in class physically. Right? The campus is not open for classes this semester. So are you doing any online classes at all or nothing? Yep. Online everything. Okay. Um, all my classes are recorded to YouTube and it's just like watch at your own learning place, which is super nice and it works amazing with my hockey schedule. Um, but I know a couple of the other girls on the team have Zoom classes where okay. they have to be there or they have clinical for a couple nursing students we got, so. Well, that must be a little difficult going to labs if you have to or be on one-on-one -on -one with your teacher, which would be a little bit difficult right now. Yeah, I remember one of the, because we had a Thanksgiving team dinner last night one of the girls who's in nursing said, it just feels like I'm playing a video game when I do my clinicals. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's not the worst thing in the world, but maybe I'll stay out of the healthcare system for a couple of years if I have to go in. There you go. Do you enjoy, obviously the schedule helps out, but do you prefer learning in a classroom setting or are you more of an on online uh, YouTube kind of student? Classroom, 100%. Yeah. I'm a visual learner. I need to... I'm, I kind of learn in all three aspects. I have to read it, I have to see it, I have to hear it. Okay. A lot of kids enjoy that as opposed to being just online. It's uh, 
I think it's also the social aspect of uh, a lot of what people miss being on a campus yeah. and university. Uh, that's going to be a little bit difficult. Obviously, you have your hockey team to lend to lean on a little bit, which is nice. Uh, Jesse, a little bit of questions now off the ice, if that's okay with you. Oh, sure. Okay, so we talked about breakfast. What would be a breakfast on a day you do not have hockey? Uh, usually that would be like I'll do a bagel, and then I'll probably like kind of make it into a like breakfast sandwich. So like I'll like do some eggs up, and then I'll get um, black forest ham or something, and I'll just do that if I have time. Um, or it's just like a bowl of cereal and a bowl of fruit. Bowl of cereal, bowl. What's your favorite fruit? Oh, I like all of them mostly. Okay. I am not a picky eater whatsoever. <laughs> so that's a good answer for mom. What's the one thing mom made that you just can't make? That's very, that I can make most stuff that she can make because she taught me well. But probably. So let me ask you ask that question. If there's one, you go home for a weekend, you can make mom something. What would you make her? Oh, I would make her stuffed peppers. Ten out of ten. Stuffed peppers. Okay, uh, I'll have to ask for the recipe later on. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you would do hobby-wise when you're not around hockey. Like, what do you like to do to kind of get your mind hit the reset button, so to speak, zone out a little bit of Jesse time? Uh, definitely, this summer I got really into hiking. We did my friend and I did like the Sleeping Giant uh, once. Amazing hike. Kills your joints on the way down. Um, then we did a couple other waterfall hikes and stuff like that. That was the majority of my summer. Um, or even just like listening to music or watching a couple episodes on Netflix or something. Okay, so you mentioned Netflix. What are you watching? Currently, Modern Family. Okay. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, Modern. I've seen a couple of those. Uh, what about uh, you mentioned music? What's uh, what's playing in the iPod right now, or what's playing on Spotify? Everything. Everything. I go from country to rap to like old rock to '80s music to it's the mood of the day and whoever else is in my car. So it's funny because you ask any hockey player, they will mention those four genres of music in that order almost. It's, you talk to the I talk to the boys, they say country and rap. I'm like, how do you do that? And they say, picture, you know, Billy Ray Cyrus with Lil Nas and Old Town Road. And I'm like, no, I can't do that anymore. And then they mention the 80s and the hair metal. And like, okay, that's my type of music right on. So that's very interesting that you still mention the same genres that every other single hockey player will mention as well, which is kind of cool. You also mentioned uh, a bit about the Sleeping Giant Trail. Going up is not as bad as coming down. Going down, yeah. it's just too steep, or is it just what about coming down? I always down? think I approached it in a very bad way where I'm like, I need to get to the bottom as fast as possible. I'm gonna run the whole way down when it's like this. Okay, that's that was, that was a rookie mistake, definitely. Um, <laughs> but no, like, uh, there's so many spots, like, you can even a lot of people bike the first half, and then once it starts going uphill, they'll like leave their bikes and they'll go up, but we walk the whole thing. I think it said eight hour average hike time without the bikes. We did it in four and a half hours. So a bit of a speedster. We were booking it. We were, there was a- Booking it, just puts it light, light again. <laughs> Bingo, we got somewhere to be. I gotta watch my two episodes later tonight. We gotta get this done, let's rock and roll. I'm pretty sure there was a group of people behind us and my friend looked, she's like, we're not letting them pass us. Just like that? Exactly like that. <laughs> That's awesome. When it comes to your uh, your gym time with or without your team, uh, how important is it to do a – well, not necessarily how important. What do you feel is the most important part of your gym time that a goaltender has to address daily? Definitely, I would say the recovery. Like, okay. you can – go like very hard on the workout but if you're not putting your body through the proper recovery or warm-up you're going to run into so many troubles and definitely the other aspect would be the form like when you're squatting making sure your knees are where they're supposed to be making sure your ankles aren't bowing in or anything like that because that will lead to 
I mean, I feel like goalies are known for knee problems, so you really need to focus on like making sure the stability of that's there. Absolutely, the hip hinge, the knee, the knee bend, and the ankle uh, range of motion is vital, especially for a goaltender. Because yeah, you ever have like a goalie coach or anyone tell how many times you do any up downs per game? Like, do you ever think oh. about these little stats like that during a game? Like, oh, geez, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> I feel like. And then, of course, when you have to do them in practice and you only have to do, like, five or something, you think it's the end of the world. But now that you put it that way, it's like, oh, I probably do, like, 100 of them in a game or something. Oh, I'm sure you do. I mean, the amount of times, I mean, butterflies. Are you a butterfly type of goalie? Would you consider yourself uh, a I feel like it's a little bit. I think I lean more towards butterfly style goaltending, but definitely, like, I incorporate more, like, of a mixed style for the most part. The hybrid goaltender. Yeah, I think that's really moving now just because, like, that's how, that's how it's evolving. Second year university, a couple more years, then you want to get into physiotherapy. Why physiotherapy? Um, I've always liked um, sport, and I feel like the best job besides maybe, like, an athletic trainer, which I might go into, would be physio. And it's always – you're helping people – that's like my whole family is in some sort of healthcare teacher helping people. So I've grown up around that. Um, and then after in grade 11, I did a co-op at the physio department in Dryden. I loved it. I, that's when I absolutely fell in love with the job. That's awesome. Well, I mean, your mom's great with IVs, right? So she, yeah, apparently so she knows what's going on there. So yeah. that's good. Uh, Five years from now, Jesse, where do you see yourself? I would definitely like to be playing in a pro league for the women. That's definitely the end goal before the physio and stuff comes in. Um, but with that, it's going to come like a lot of work. What do you th you say a lot of work? To f explain that one for me. That's going to be putting in the time off ice, putting – the time in on ice putting the time in in the mental training putting like everything has to be in place for that to happen and i'm gonna i have to be willing to put the work in to get to that end goal do you prefer a coach that's a likable player coach or one that's more old school put your nose to the grindstone hard work or no work type of uh, scenario i definitely like the one that will push you uh you can be my friend any time of the week if you want, but if you're not willing to help me push myself, thanks. See you later. I'll go find another coach. Wow. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty strong words, Jesse. And I appreciate that. If you had to deliver a message or tell something, you know, you're talking to or working in a hockey camp or a goalie school, working with younger netminders, uh, female hockey players, what would you tell them? Don't be scared to try new things or putting yourself like what's the saying where it's like, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Never get comfortable with being comfortable. Yes. Yeah. Because Absolutely. that's not how life works. You're going to like, maybe your hockey career ends, but then your job starts. So you're going to be put into new situations that you're not going to know what to do. But if you're comfortable being uncomfortable, then you'll be able to, work with the situation very refreshing to hear that from you jesse because a lot of players take more time to figure that out or they use a lot of support systems as crutches and they don't have that independence built in which i can clearly see within you i really appreciate how refreshing it is to discuss hockey with you the preparation the mindset that's required and the physical demand of being a student athlete one last fun question. If you could be any actor, if you could be anywhere besides being a hockey player, what would you like to do or like to be? be or just hockey? It would be an astronaut. An astronaut? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why, but that was the first thing that popped into my head. She'd like to be an astronaut. Okay. This is the free floating and the free falling mentality of being in space? I guess so. I guess that so. is honestly the first thing that popped into my head, so... If you had – okay, one more question because I, I didn't catch that. You caught me off guard with that one. Uh, I'm going to give you a scenario. You are playing in a celebrity hockey tournament. 
and you have you know a breakaway competition against one player who would you want to stop on a breakaway the most does it have to be like a hockey player or any? Yeah, it could be anybody it could be conway from the mighty ducks it could be cuba gooding jr it could be uh an, it could be a singer anybody okay well that's easy Giannis Antetokounmpo for the um, milwaukee bucks <laughs> if he could skate or if he <laughs> could skate Hundred percent. All right. Well, even in ball hockey, maybe we'll give him a ball hockey chance first. Yeah, I could. I could work with that. What is it about Jonas you like about the most? Probably just like the intensity that he brings. Always, like you, you don't really see him. You see him smile on the court, but you more see that like burning intensity that he's gonna do whatever he can to get his team to win. He needs some help, though. Oh, uh, definitely. He might get some help on a different team in a couple of years. Oh, hopefully. Hopefully. I, I, de I definitely like the box, but like he needs a he needs a championship before like his other brother gets a second one. That would, you bring up a valid point, Jesse. You like a lot of sports, basketball being one of your favorites. Um, I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Did you watch the finals this past week? No, I didn't. I don't have uh, cable at Red. So you got to keep that. So you got to keep more of a focus, otherwise. But don't yeah. you have, can't you watch highlights? I watch highlights on like Instagram and stuff, but that that's all I got to work with. Well, Jesse, it's been a really good talk with you. I really appreciate it. Uh, when does has the season started yet for no, you? No, we're it gets reevaluated in January. So we got to we're so this is like an extra long development camp. Yeah, which I'm the, not complaining about. You're not complaining about it. You're no, taking I it in stride. I love the fact that we can gel as a team and get significantly stronger before we're tested in a game slash season situation. Okay. So that first bus trip, what song are we singing karaoke style? Oh, I feel like it's going to be uh, Miley Cyrus, uh, Party in the USA. That seems to be the go-to for most of the team gatherings. Oh, my God. I, that's, that's bringing back memories in my own head, I'll tell you. It's one of my favorite songs to perform myself. I do very well at it. Uh, Jesse, I want to thank you very much for joining me. It's thank been fun. Thank you so much for having me. I, I want to talk to you in January when we figure out when the season starts and see how uh, less anxious you become and more gun-ho you are. They strap on those pads in a real game, okay? Okay, sounds good. Jesse Pettigrew, Nipissing Lakers, the netminder, with an incredible stat line from last year at Lakehead. And she's going to prove it once again when this season finally begins. Thanks for joining us here on the ice Tuesdays and Thursdays. Make sure you check out Coffee and Graham Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 10.30 in the morning. Thanks for watching again on Amateur Sports TV. Check out all the social media pages and all of our wonderful stories with all of our guests and all of our athletes here on ASTV. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.